Welcome to the next project. The name of this project is Complete Provisioning with Ansible. This project is continuation of the previous project, the project where we did Ansible for AWS. It's continuation of that project. So in that project, AWS VPC setup we have done by using Ansible. In this project, on that VPC, we are going to set up our vProfile application stack. So our project AWS lift and shift. In that project, we have set up some bunch of EC2 instances and on that we have provisioned vProfile stack and all the services, MySQL, Memcache, RabbitMQ, Tomcat. All those things we are going to automatically set up by using Ansible. So you can say this project is combination of two other projects but this will be completely automated. Okay, so let's see when, where, how. Okay, let's see the scenario and what are the problems. Okay, let's see you have an operations team and this team will do the regular deployment and setup. Commonly, you can also call this team a system admin team or systems engineer team. So they'll be in charge of managing all the operating systems in your infrastructure, cloud, set up virtual machine, set up and all the changes and they will get regular request of provisioning or making changes to the infrastructure. Today we are living in a time of agile and everything needs to be agile, quick. And also we have a lot of disposable environment, pre-prod environments which are really disposable and such kind of request comes very regularly. So. The team will get a request to set up the complete infrastructure, which is complex. There are so many moving paths. You'll have different services, you'll have network, you'll have security, you'll have high availability. So setting up that entire stack is really complex, time consuming work. Moreover, if you want to do it again and again, it's not repeatable, right? I'm talking about, you know, humanly speaking, right? Doing the same thing again and again. And also making regular changes. Making regular changes, it's difficult to track if the changes are happening manually or, you know, like through a human, of course. Okay, so those things are really difficult to track. And when this human intervention, there is always chance of making mistakes, which can lead to, you know, high lead time. Also, managing all those things is a time-consuming work. You need people, a lot of people, a lot of operations engineer to manage all those things, your cloud infrastructure, your services, your operating system and making regular changes to them. Again, keep in mind, in today's time, we need to be more agile. So instead of uh, a um, human doing it again and again, we need to have a configuration management system of our entire infrastructure. So an automation framework, a tool that can manage all the configuration of our infrastructure automatically. Okay, so we're talking about automatic setup. If you have a new provisioning or any changes, we're going to do it automatically. So no or very less chance of making human errors. Also, everything will be centralized. So any changes that happens will be centralized. And if you have that as a code, so you can version control it. So you have infrastructure as a code. And when you have a code to manage your infrastructure, it's repeatable. We can execute it as many as time we want. Also, it's reusable. So you can reuse this infrastructure as a code across your projects. We already talked about the statistics of cloud automation. Now, automation is not just a cool thing to do. It really adds business value. And more than 70% of IT companies are telling that they are having 10% more revenue growth. 84% of them are telling they have really lowered the operations cost. 81% are telling that they have become more innovative. Now that's very important. You know, when you hand over your work to a tool, to a machine, then you have more time to find more innovative solutions to your problem. Okay, you become more agile. So 84% of the IT organization are saying that they have become more agile, which is need of the hour. So in this project, we are going to use Ansible for configuration management. And our entire stack will be set up on AWS Cloud Platform. 
we are here talking about complete provisioning vpc security group instances when the stack is ready we are going to set up services on ec2 instances mysql memcache rabbitmq tomcat nginx all those services of our vprofile project also with the load balancer so the entire execution is three folds first we're going to set up a vpc which we already did in our previous project so we have the code from the previous project ansible for v, uh, aws in that project so we're going to pull that code from our repository execute which is going to set up the entire vpc stack that's one next we're going to provision ec2 instances load balancer and security group ec2 instances for our v profile stack or all the v profile project services mysql memcache rabbitmq tomcat and nginx so just ec2 instances next we are going to see how we will provision the entire v profile stack so the ec2 instances that got created on them we're going to install services configure and, and do the entire setup really we're going to build artifacts set up mysql memcache rabbitmq tomcat and nginx Now we'll see the architectural design. We have three architectural design in this project. One for VPC that you have already seen. Second for our EC2 instances. Third for provisioning vProfile stack. So let's see it. Okay, this design is for our VPC setup. So we have playbook for setting up VPC from our previous project, which will have variables, configuration, and list of modules, which is going to use Python Boto make a connection to AWS cloud account, create VPC in that VPC, we'll have subnets distributed in multiple zones. We'll have public subnets with an internet gateway connection. We'll have private subnets connecting with a route table that's gonna forward the request to the NAT gateway and also the bastion host, which is inside a security group. So this is the same design from the previous project. We're going to pull the code, execute the playbook, and it will set up the stack. So that's first execution. Second execution, the second execution will be playbook, which is going to access our EC2 service, which will have variables that got created in the previous project, and also a lot of modules. Again, it's going to use Python Boto, make an API connection to our AWS account, and the VPC that we created in the previous execution will have a public subnet in that we'll have an application load balancer. So we'll create an application load balancer in public subnet. In private subnet, we're going to have EC2 instances for our vProfile services, the Tomcat, RabbitMQ, MySQL, all of that. And it will be distributed in two private zones and these EC2 instances will also have security groups. So security group will also get created and our instances will be divided into or distributed into two private subnets. Also, there is a bastion host from the previous setup. Also, not to mention, there will be key pairs also that we are going to create. So this is the second execution. Now, once we have our infrastructure ready, we can provision our services. So a third execution now. In the third execution, we'll have playbooks, which is going to set up our vProfile stack provision of services. So we'll have the inventory file. This will get created automatically in the second execution where we launch EC2 instances. So it's going to use those inventory file and all the modules. So this is no API execution. Python is going to use SSH connection, SSH to the EC2 instances that we created in the previous execution. MySQL setup. So again, MySQL EC2 instance will be in a private subnet of the VPC. So we provision MySQL service, then Memcache service, then RabbitMQ service, then Tomcat service, and finally Nginx service. We are also going to uh, create a load balancer in the, in the second execution. So instances will be already mapped. As soon as your Nginx service comes up, the instance will become healthy and you can access it from the load balancer. So again, first VPC stack setup, second instances and load balancer setup, third 
we profile stack provisioning. All right, so we have a lot of things to do. Let's get started. Okay, so this is what we're going to do and in this order. We get into AWS account, we're going to create an EC2 instance to run our Ansible playbook. We'll install Ansible and Boto on that. We'll set up an EC2 role for Ansible. We should already have this role from our previous project, Ansible for AWS. So we can use the same thing. If you have not deleted the Ansible control machine, so you can use the same. You don't need to launch another EC2 instance. In any case, we fetch the source code from our project, previous project, Ansible for AWS, which has the source code to set up VPC. Okay, we'll execute that VPC playbook, which will set up the VPC stack. Then we'll write the playbooks to launch our EC2 instance, load balancer, security group, and few other things we have, like key pairs, for our vProfile stack. We'll get into vProfile VPC after this. Third execution where we want to access the private instances in private subnet is not possible from our Ansible control machine because Ansible control machine will be in a default VPC or vProfile VPC, a two different network. So we will not be able to connect to private instances in our private subnets. So we need to get into the VPC, vProfile VPC and there are a few ways, either you can use Bastion host or you can launch the controller in the in the vProfile VPC, in the public subnet, we can do that. So there are a few ways, we'll see both ways, launching the controller in the vProfile VPC and also we can use the Bastion host also, then it's gonna be your choice. Once we are in the VPC, our EC2 instance is in the VPC, our controller is in the VPC, then we'll write playbooks to set up our vProfile stack. Okay, you have to remember, Ansible is going to do SSH, right, to EC2 instance, to install those services, right, to access the operating system. So it's not possible from the default VPC to log into the vProfile, to get into vProfile VPC. We can do VPC peering though, okay, but that's again too much for now. So we'll see simpler approach in this area. Okay, let's get started now. 